This is course 3, lesson 85, looking at surface area of cylinders and prisms. So we should, at the end of this, be able to calculate surface areas and lateral surface areas of cylinders and prisms. So let's just start with what we know about areas. Because surface area is really just taking a 3D object and adding together the areas of those surfaces, we need to know some of these formulas. Well, rectangles, we have the simple formula of A equals length times width. Area is just taking the length times the width. Parallelograms, well, that's just a rectangle that has been shifted a little bit, so we say the area is the base times the height, being able to say that that height is perpendicular. So looking at a parallelogram, this is our base, and that dotted line there is the height. Trapezoids, well, we have the area being base 1 plus base 2. So if we're looking at a trapezoid, we have base 1, we have base 2, and I can label my height right here. So we take my base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2, and then we're going to multiply the, by that perpendicular height. Triangles, as we know, have an area of base times height divided by 2, and circles, our area is pi r squared. All of these are going to come in handy as we do the surface area of cylinders and prisms. Well, if we look at the surface area for any cylinder or prism, we would say that we need to take 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter times the height. What this does is our two bases, let's say we're talking about a cylinder, our two bases are those circles. Remember, we determine what a base is when it is the same shape and they are parallel to each other. That is necessary. And we determine the height of the prism as what is, what is the length between those two bases. So if we need to find the area of our two bases, that's where we get the 2B. And the perimeter times the height, well, if we take a cylinder, really what this is looking like is a circle, a rectangle, and another circle. That's like if you had a soup can and unfolded the label. That would be the, um, this rectangle right here. Okay, That means that this is the perimeter and this is the height. Well, this doesn't only work on cylinders, it also works with other prisms, and we'll see that in a second. But first, let's look at a cylinder and take this regular formula and transform it into what it would look like technically for a cylinder. Well, with a cylinder, the area of the base is a circle. So we would say the surface area is 2 times, well, whatever the area formula for a circle is which is pi r squared. Plus, well, the perimeter of the base. If I am taking the perimeter of this base, that's just the circumference of a circle. So our perimeter, we would say, is pi times diameter. And our two circles are our bases, so the length in between is our height. So we multiply by height. So in this case, let's go ahead and try to plug in some numbers and solve it. Okay, and I'll just make myself a little bit of room here. So to do this, I look and see first, what is the radius? And we are given that the diameter is 4. So if we just look at half of that, half of that is 2. So we say it's 2 times pi times 2 squared. Sorry about that. Plus pi times, well, diameter, okay? Diameter is 4, and our height is 5, okay? Well, now we just need to simplify. We have all the numbers in there, and since we are allowed to keep it in terms of pi for this question, we, can, we don't have to multiply by 3.14. We just leave pi as its symbol version, pi. So we say 2 times 2 squared. Well, this is 4 times 2, so we have 8 pi. Plus, well, 4 times 5 is 20, 
so we have 20 pi. Add those together and we get 28 pi. And if we had units, maybe say inches, we would say inches squared since we're talking about area. Since there are no units, we just put units squared. And that's all we're doing for the surface area of a cylinder. Let's look at another example like this one. So once again, we look at my surface area. Surface area is 2 times pi r squared plus pi times diameter, the perimeter, times height. And let's plug in some numbers. Surface area is 2 pi. Well, our radius, the whole diameter is 10, so our radius is 5 squared plus pi times diameter, which is 10 times 6. Now, I could go ahead and use 3.14 for pi, but that would mean a lot more multiplication than I actually have to do. So I'm going to simplify this first in terms of pi and then multiply by 3.14. So in this case, I have 5 squared, which is 25, times 2, so I have 50 pi. Plus, well, 6 times 10 is 60, so we get 60 pi. And so I'm going to say my surface area is 110 pi units squared. Okay, that would be my answer in terms of pi. But if we go ahead and multiply it out, I have to do 110 times 3.14. And so if I do that, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 1 is 4, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and then lastly, 3 times 0, oops, sorry about that, is 0, 3 times 1 is 3, and we have another 3. And we just have to add, so we get 0, 4, 5, 4, and 3. But we don't actually have 34,000. We need to move that decimal spot, and we move it twice since we have 2 here. So our answer in full units is 345.4 units squared. It's as simple as that, transferring it from in terms of pi to using 3.14 as pi. Let's do one more, but in this case, I want to find what is the lateral surface area. And if you remember, lateral surface area just means that I don't include the, ba the bases in my calculation. So my surface area, my lateral surface area, is actually just perimeter times height, which is kind of nice. I don't have to do anything more than that. So for a cylinder, I would say my lateral surface area is pi times diameter, because that's the circumference, that's the um, perimeter of the base, and then I'm going to multiply by height. So my lateral surface area is pi times 40 times 30. And I can multiply that out and get my lateral surface area in terms of pi is 1,200 pi. And it looks like we're in feet squared. And once again, we just have to, when we're using 3.14, I would do 1,200 times 3.14, which gives me, let's see here, 1,200. All right, we get an answer of 3,768, 3,768 feet squared. That is the lateral surface area because I don't include the bases, I just include what is surrounding it, okay? So lateral surface area. So we've seen four cylinders, um, both surface area and lateral surface area. Let's look at triangles then, triangular prisms. Now, the biggest question to ask yourself with any 3D shape is, what is the shape of the base? And once again, we are looking for something that is the same shape and parallel to each other. Now, a lot of you might say, well, there's a rectangle that looks like it's sitting on that base, but unfortunately, this rectangle right here doesn't have anything it's parallel to. It's kind of opposite of this 
peak right here. So that's not going to be our base. Actually, our base is going to be this, these triangles right here. Because we have two triangles and they are parallel. Okay, so let's try this out. Now let's take our surface area formula and plug it in for a triangle. So the area of the base would be an area of a triangle. So we have 2 times base times height divided by 2 plus, well the perimeter, there's not a special formula for it, we just have to add up the sides, have to add up 5 and 6 and 5 to get the perimeter. So we just keep it as perimeter times height. Okay, so let's plug in some calculations. We do surface area is 2 times, well the base of this is 6, and the height of the triangle, remember height of that base is 4, okay, because of that perpendicular dotted. We divide that by 2, and that will be the area of our bases. Now we have to do the perimeter. Well, that means that we have to go all on the outside of the triangle to do 5 plus 5 plus 6. And we would multiply by the height. Now, it's not actually the height of the base, it's the height of the prism, which is the length that connects the two bases. And in this case, it's 7. Well, we look at this and say, let's work it out. 2 times 6 times 4 is 24 divided by 2, so that's 12, plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 is 16 times 7. So we get 24, and we get, if you work that out, it should be 112. So my fi final answer is 136, and it looks like we are in units squared. Okay, so triangular prism just using that general formula to help us out. All right, let's keep, let's do one more example. One more example. This is a, a tough one, but definitely something that we can do. So, Hector wants to paint the exterior walls of a shed. Should we find the lateral surface area or the total surface area? Okay, well, if you think about it, would, the big question is, would I want to figure out this inside here, do I need to paint that? The answer would be no. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but just remember that when you are thinking about finding the surface area of something, we can cut it up into different parts. We can cut it up into the different parts that we have, the different shapes that we have, so that we can, I'll just show you this other method, so that we can actually include um, the different things that we need. Okay, well in this case, since we just want to paint the walls of the shed, we are looking at this rectangular prism down below. And we don't need to paint this inside part or this inside part. Right? That's on the bottom, that's on the dirt, and the top part would be inside of the barn, right? Inside of the shed. So let's look at the lateral surface area of that rectangular prism. So we start with lateral surface area is the perimeter of the base times the height. Well, we know that this is our base because we're not including those in my lateral surface area. So I need the perimeter of that, which would be 10 plus 8, and we have another 10 plus 8. And then we look at the height. Well, that's what's connecting our two bases, and that is 7. So we do 10 plus 8, 10 plus 8, and we get 18 plus 18. So that looks like we get 36 times 7. Well, if we do 36 times 7, that means we get 42. 21 plus 4 is 25. 252 feet. Let's say it's feet squared. What that helps us with is, let's say you are at the store and you have a gallon of paint in your hand, and it says it can cover 100 square feet. Well, you would know that I would need, for sure, two buckets and then a third one to cover that 52 square feet, okay? That's why we do this, so that we can figure out, maybe if I'm covering it, maybe if I'm wrapping it or painting it, we can actually figure out how much I need. That's the point of 
surface area and lateral surface area. I, this, I hope this was helpful for your homework and for studying.